So here it is. Here's your spinal cord model. Here's your anterior median fissure, one of the major landmarks. Here are your dorsal root ganglia here. Here's one, here's one. These are the major landmarks, so you know immediately this is anterior and this is posterior. We see the gray matter here, this butterfly-shaped thing, and then we see the surrounding white matter here. So what we have then is we have several different parts of the gray matter. We have seven is the anterior gray horn, six is the lateral gray horn, five is the posterior gray horn, and then if you look, you can see that it's sectioned away and one of the segments is cut away, and you can see this thin canal here. This is the central canal, and it's numbered nine with a little arrow pointing towards it on your model. And then you can see where the white matter, or sorry, the gray matter crosses over here on either side of the central canal. So the part that's anterior to it is going to be the anterior gray commissure. This part that's posterior to the central canal is the posterior gray commissure. Then you can see also, if you follow the anterior median sulcus up, you see this number four here is a crossing over of white matter right in front of the, where the anterior gray commissure is. That is the anterior white commissure. That's number four right here. So then we can see that we have these things coming off of our spinal cord segments. And so each segment you can see has one of these coming off of it, and this is a spinal nerve. And it is formed from the ventral root, which is gonna carry motor information, motor commands to efferent fibers, which will then stimulate effectors, such as skeletal muscle or some kind of visceral effectors, depending on where they arise from. So then we have the dorsal root, which is gonna be bringing sensory information from all over the body. So general sensory information from the surface of the body, like pain, temperature, touch, general sensations, pressure, this kind of thing. And then we're going to have visceral sensation also being brought into this posterior region via this dorsal root. The dorsal root ganglion here, number 24, is where we're going to find the cell bodies of the afferent neurons that are bringing this information into the posterior part of the gray matter. If we look between the two anterior gray horns at the white matter, we find the anterior white columns. They're on either side of the anterior median fissure. Then if we take the lateral part from about the border of the anterior gray horn and the posterior gray horn, we have the lateral white columns here. Same on this side. And then between the two posterior gray horns, we have the posterior white columns. We also have a posterior median sulcus here. This is number 10. And typically, it comes down right about to the level of where the gray matter is. All right, so we see all these little things coming off here. These are rootlets. And these are what are going to come together to form the ventral root and the dorsal root. So the dorsal root fans out into these little rootlets that then come into the posterior gray. And then of course we have neurons arising from these, or I should say whose cell bodies are in these anterior segments of the gray matter, and they're going to be sending axons out through the ventral root toward effectors. We have somatic motor cell bodies that are gonna be in this anterior gray horn here. And these are represented by these little black wires. The black wires are gonna be the rootlets and eventually they're gonna to form together to be the somatory motor efferents. So these are gonna be taking motor commands from the spinal cord out to some effector in the body. The red ones, mostly arising from this lateral gray horn here in six, they're gonna be taking motor commands to visceral effectors such as glands, maybe adipose tissue, maybe um, smooth muscle, that kind of thing. And so they're color-coded. The red ones are for visceral motor effectors and the black ones are for somatic motor effectors. So we have somatic motor and we have visceral motor. Now if we continue going posteriorly, we will have visceral sensory neurons coming in and those would be these green ones here. So the green ones these little green wires are representing afferent fibers, bringing information from visceral receptors in the body. And then we have the yellow ones, 
which are going to be for the somatic sensation. And that's going to be coming into this area around five. And this is going to be bringing your pain, temperature, touch, pressure from the surface of your body and bringing that in. So this is your somatic sensation, your visceral sensation, visceral motor, and somatic motor. This is where the cell bodies of those neurons are located. Now, our dorsal root ganglion, if you recall that when we are bringing afferents in that are bringing information from peripheral receptors, they are those pseudo-unipolar neurons that have axons, or dendrites, I should say, directly connected to the axons, and then the cell body hanging off to the side. The cell bodies are all residing in this dorsal root ganglion, and then you have the axon continue on, and then to connect or contact synapse with some kind of sensory neuron that will then be relaying information up to higher areas of the brain. Say again? 24 is your dorsal root ganglion. 23 is your visceral root. 25 is, or sorry, your dorsal, dorsal root. 23 is the dorsal root. 24 is the dorsal root ganglion. 25 is the ventral root. 26, 28, they're both parts of the uh, spinal nerve. And then we have these little rami coming off of it. 28 is really the anterior ramus. 29 and 30 are going to be your rami communicantes. They're going to have a, a sympathetic ganglion attached here. And then we have this one over here, 27, is your posterior ramus. And we'll get into a lot more detail about that later, especially in the lectures. But that's basically what we need to know for the spinal cord model.